Hey everyone, I am here at PAX West, joined by Jay from Jay's Two Cents. How's it going, Jay? Good, my first PAX. It's uh, everything I expected it to be. Lots what, of games, lots of people, and um, yeah. <laughs> what else, uh, What I mean, what did you think getting into this? What, did you just come out here for fun, or what was the impetus? Oh, I, I came out here completely on my own dime, my own time, uh, just to kind of experience it. I didn't do any appointments. I just wanted to, to come and see. I've been to E3 before, but I've never been to a PAX, so I wanted to compare. Very cool. So today, we're going to be talking over the crowd about uh, some of the NVIDIA RTX stuff, I think is the plan. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzlies High-End Thermal Paste and Liquid Metal. Thermal Grizzlies Cryonaut is an affordable, high-quality thermal compound that doesn't face some of the aging limitations of other pastes on the market. Cryonaut has a thermal conductivity of 12.5 watts per meter kelvin, focuses on endurance, is easy to spread, and isn't electrically conductive, making it safe to use on GPU dyes. Thermal Grizzly also makes Conductonaut Liquid Metal, which we've used to drop 20 degrees off some temperatures in our delitted tests. Buy a tube at the link in the description below. There's, I don't know, there was a lot of controversy at, at launch, especially around like, well, a lot of things. Pricing, uh, the, the ray tracing demos in general. The, the secretive performance figures. Yeah, so I, let's start there, I guess. What are, your, what are your thoughts on the performance presentation? And, and you saw their live stream, I guess, right? Yeah, so I, I wasn't able to go to Germany for Gamescom. Um, I, so I got to experience it from the same consumer perspective as everyone else, which was unique. Because typically, you know, you go to these events, you get kind of a different treatment than the people that are going to be getting the information, you know, through whatever media venue they're they're doing. Um, I I spent the the whole two hours waiting to see some sort of figures. They always compare it towards the previous 80 series, which we expected, but they only talked about ray tracing, which, to be fair, they're very proud of, right? They've invested 10 years worth of time and money into the into the touring core. But at the same time, it was kind of like, if you want the audience to get hyped and you want the audience to pre-purchase it, uh, especially if you're talking to the gamer audience, you got to give them some sort of a carrot, right? You've got to dangle something other than the new tech, which is exciting. But in terms of just, if, if you are on Pascal, or you, let's say you're an older architecture than Pascal and you want to justify skipping Pascal and going right to Turing, then you got to show them something, and I was really disappointed that there was absolutely nothing. And then the charts that did come out within the days that followed, again, had no access model. They had no reference as to what the performance gains were. So it's still this this veil of secrecy, and no one knows exactly what to expect. Yeah, we heard a lot about ray tracing performance specifically, but I mean, as you said, the 10 series, it, it's not. We all know it's not particularly impressive at ray tracing because it wasn't built for that. Exactly. So, so yes, it's a pretty, it's it's a comparison where clearly the 10 series will lose every time by a lot. Right. But and, of course, what people care about is you know rasterization performance, which is games as we know it today. So how does it compare there? And my fear is that maybe the performance metrics and the gaps weren't as wide as we would expect, uh, which is why they didn't really talk about that. But on the flip side, I mean, maybe if they were wider than we were we were expecting. Maybe the fear is that because they've got so much inventory to dump, you did a good piece on that. Maybe they don't want people to necessarily skip Pascal, otherwise they're going to be sitting on, on hundreds of thousands of these units not really moving, or they have to discount them too much where there's no profit. That's, so that's an interesting theory I haven't heard yet about this, and it, that uh, not showing performance could be a potential way of encouraging more Pascal sales too. How many people have you seen in your own comments, your videos, mine, online, saying, screw it, I'm just going to go buy a 1080? A lot. Right, which almost seems like strategic. So, I mean, it's 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 a little bit of a tin tinfoil hat theory, but I think it holds water. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, on the ten series, we know they overordered. They had too many. Oh, yeah. It's that's out there. That's known. So, they've and got a, the board partners are absor uh, they're absorbing that. Yeah. So, one thing I'm wondering is, for like the 2060 and 2050, are we going to see Pascal stock? That's that's converted in name only? Like, are we going to see a 1070 pulled and made into a 2050 or a 2060? So, so Mike, so think about this from a, from a buyer's perspective. In terms of confusion, uh, let's say Pascal coexists with Turing. So you're going to have a 1050, 1050 Ti, two 1060s, possibly a 2050, a 2060, a 1070, 1070 Ti, 1080, 1080 Ti, 2080, 2080 Ti, Titan V. That is a very crowded product stack. So, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't just take, let's say, 6 gig 2060s or uh, 1060s and maybe 1070s and somehow rebrand those. 
I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah, we've seen that before. Right. Like we've seen uh, AMD has done it a lot, Nvidia has done it a lot. So it's definitely been done in the past. And I, I think, I don't know. I, we were talking before this about how the RTX branding. My theory has been that it's going to be on the high end, and then like the ten, the 2060 is going to be GTX. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I can't remember where I saw it, but so if you watch the live stream, then you know that it was kind of a uh, it was kind of a circus. It, it started late, almost like 22 minutes late. The the show usually is very choreographed, where the website is, various things go live, various tweets go live in in conjunction with as Jen Sun is talking about something. Those all went live 20 minutes early because Jensen was out of sync. And I don't remember where I saw it. I, th I want to say it was actually Ryan Shrout was, was showing these, these websites as they were going live. Uh, I saw one that showed the product model and it said RTX and GTX. And I saw specifically a 2050 and 2060 there. But as fast as I saw that website go online, it was taken down. So I don't think they can possibly bring RTX to that price point. I really don't see how they could do that. Yeah, like ray tracing specifically. This is one of my points, and this isn't like to say anything, it's not, I'm not saying anything bad here. We're not saying anything bad about the branding, but just to be clear. But uh, I think from a, a performance perspective, the 2060 probably won't have the, the power really to drive ray tracing the way a 2080 would, obviously. So sticking with GTX makes sense to me there. Right, and I mean, it's 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 very unlikely, obviously, that it will be even a, sh a cut down version of touring. I mean, I mean, who knows, it could be. Um, but you know, what I think is interesting that no one has really talked about in this discussion is everyone was expecting some sort of HBM out of NVIDIA. But I feel like they kind of went the other way where they've shown the, the conventional uh, you know, GDDR4 layout or GDDR layout, GDDR6 obviously this time around. They kind of went more with like a stacked core design in a way rather than stacked RAM. Maybe, maybe the, uh, you know, the, the Fiji and the core and, and AMD's involvement of that just kind of showed that the gains weren't there based on the investment. And I, I think it's funny that both brands kind of went two completely different ways on how they were going to handle the new core architecture. But I, I also feel like if you go and look at the history of NVIDIA launching the first rasterization card, you know, um, same discussions taking place. No one cares about rasterization, pixel shading, oh, that's a fad, who cares? No one cares what the shade, shade, or what shadows look like, shaders. And suddenly that's the only way we know how to game today. And it's the same discussion taking place now. But I feel like anyone that's adopting the 2080 or 2080 Ti for the ray tracing performance obviously is bleeding edge, early adopter, very expensive. But who knows what the next family of cards could bring in terms of performance gains. But I mean, you, this is how you get new technology to emerge is somebody has to launch it. And that's exactly what we have right now. And I think people are very scared of the price point to the performance. Definitely, definitely scared of the price. And on HBM and stuff like that, AMD was sort of it was interesting, they were sort of forced into HBM because uh, of power consumption concerns and power budget. So like AMD uh, really benefited from a power standpoint, you save a lot of wattage by going to HBM and they needed that to have the, the budget. Right. Nvidia really only drove it with the Titan V right. and the they needed And the problem with Fiji and Vega was, or you know, Fury and Vega was the uh, just the cost of manufacturing. Yeah, it's, it's very expensive to do HBM. Like it's, it's uh, last I checked from a source at SK Hynix, it was about 150 bucks for eight gigabytes of HBM2, yeah. which is, that's cost. That's like, that's yeah. before the consumer pays yeah. for it. Well, you know, at the end of the day though, nobody needs RTX. Uh, heck, nobody even needs Pascal, to be honest. These are luxury items. These really are nice to haves, not need to haves. And of course we all want it. And if you can't afford it, then of course it, it, it kind of kicks you in the teeth and, and it makes you feel mad. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you have a Pascal card and it's, it's meeting your needs and you're not planning on trying to do ray tracing, there's really no reason to upgrade. Um, same thing, I've, I've seen people, I've seen a lot of comments of like, well, I guess I'm hanging on to my 1080 Ti for a while. It's like, yeah, that's a five year card. That card's going to last you a while. There's no reason to, to exchange that card. So, I mean, I guess if my, my piece of advice to anyone watching is if your card is doing the job now, it's not going to suddenly not do it overnight when these launch. Yeah, if generally when people ask us, you probably get the same question all the time. Should I upgrade or should I wait, yeah. right? And my answer is always, uh, well, I mean, are you happy with what it does now, today? Right. And if you are, then who cares? And if you're not happy with it, it's holding you back, you're professional, you need the rendering power, whatever, then yeah, upgrade. But like as of, right, today, depending on when you're watching this, but as of today, it might be worth to wait one more month because pricing for Pascal, if you're just going to go with the older generation and not go RTX, can only really go down from here. It's not going to go up. 
So that's usually the only time I would recommend someone wait is if we're right, right on the edge of a launch because you're going to also see a lot of really good used deals out there if you buy from somebody that's trustworthy. Right, and we should, uh, we should balance this out before we close out, talk about some of the good things that we think okay. can be coming with RTX. So on the upside, I mean, from what we know today, uh, whether it's the board partner designs or the technology, or ray tracing, whatever, what are the things that you are the most interested in you think have the most positive upsides? Because we, we've been talking about like the criticism side, so what's the upside? NVIDIA's involvement with Vulkan and optimization for Vulkan. That's how they're getting the ray tracing performance, is doing it with the Vulkan API, which is uh, very, it's very good on overhead. Um, I'm also really interested in seeing how all of these different types of AI cores and, and, and the other types of, of architecture in the GPU is able to handle a more very hardware level asynchronous compute type of workload. So I feel like the future is here in terms of you know, instead of having CUDA core sitting idle or, or whatever, or having to trade off workload, you're going to have so many parallel workflows happening at the GPU level now. Yeah, and that's something we talked about with the uh, Titan V as well, right. where with the Titan V, we saw huge improvements in async compute. So like Vulkan on Sniper 4 did really well. Uh, right. DX12 titles like Ash is doing really well. And I talked to NVIDIA about that, and we publicly said that uh, the and, focus. And those, and those are places they typically lack behind AMD. Yes, definitely. And NVIDIA said it when we tested it that part of their focus for the next gen, which wasn't named at the time, was going to be async compute. Right. So yeah, I would I would agree with you. That's definitely one of the biggest upsides here. Uh, right. And and as we see drivers mature and, and developers, you know, I I don't know from a developer standpoint in terms of game development how hard it is for them to implement this new hardware. But I mean, at least we know moving forward it. Hopefully the, car, the, the cards that are not able to do this level of, of asynchronous compute or parallel workflows, hopefully they won't be hindered in some way as game development moves on. Otherwise, then you are talking about the necessity to upgrade. But I still think we're going to be at least two or three years from it being every AAA title is coming out with this card optimization in mind. Right, and then there's also, just like Hairworks and everything else, there'll probably be a toggle to just turn it off, right? So. Oh yeah, yeah, I would hope so, for sure. <laughs> Could you imagine if there wasn't? <laughs> We'd be having a whole different discussion today. <laughs> Very different, yeah. Uh, any other uh, upsides we want to talk about? I mean, a lot of it we won't really know until performance testing, you know. It's, but really, it's really hard to say considering we're still so in the dark. So, I mean, obviously, we'll have this conversation again in a month. Yeah, it sounds good. So, uh, Jay, if you don't know, is from Jay's Two Cents on YouTube. You can check him out. We'll link it below just in case you don't know who he is. Does a lot of really cool water cooling content, but I think everyone knows that at this point. So, uh, Jay, thank you for joining me. All right, thank you. Appreciate it. And we'll see you all next time.